Google recently released a new plugin for WordPress called Web Stories. And if you're familiar with stories on apps and sites like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, this is going to feel pretty familiar to you. Now in this first look video, I'll be going over the plugin and my thoughts on it in a little detail, but it is worth bearing in mind this is still a beta version and may well include some issues, bugs and quirks, and features that may not actually make it through to the final version. So let's take a look at Google Web Stories for WordPress. So first of all, thanks to Lyle Dev over on the WP Crew Facebook group. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. This is the new Web Stories for WordPress plugin from Google. It is still in beta and I will be totally honest, I've had quite a few different issues with not so much using the plugin, but more a case of trying to integrate it into a site. Now, if that's a technical issue from my side of things, from the setup that I'm using, I don't know. But I'm going to show you how to use the plugin in this example. And I'm going to give you a quick example of what a typical sort of story would look like. So if we open up, this is a story. And as you can see, if you've ever used anything like Instagram stories or YouTube stories and so on, even Facebook stories, it's going to look fairly familiar to you. And there are a couple of use cases I could see off the top of my head that could be quite useful. And if you're on a mobile device, it's definitely something that could be really useful. There are some other things to take into consideration. First of all, it's by Google. So this could be another one of those Google services that gets pushed and then nothing comes of it. So bear that in mind if you invest time and effort into this. Don't pin all your hopes on it because it's still very early days and they have been trying to push the whole sort of stories aspect for quite some time prior to even releasing this particular plugin. However, like I say, there are some nice use cases I can see you using this and it does look considerably better on a mobile device, less sort of flicking through like this where you've got individual setup for each of the different individual sort of pages. That being said, let's take a look at how we'd actually go ahead and create something like this. Now, once you go ahead and install the plugin, which you can download using the link in the description below, it isn't available on the WordPress repository right now because it is still a beta plugin. So bear that in mind. Don't use it on a production site. Test it out, see what you think of it, but don't use it live right now. Once you've installed it, you're going to get a new entry and you can see we've got stories on the left hand side. If we open that up to, for example, the dashboard section, this is going to take us in and show us all the stories we currently have, including some templates that are shipping with this beta version of the plugin. We can filter things. You know, this is laid out pretty self-explanatory. There's nothing complex about this. We can create a new story. We can view existing stories or we can explore the templates. Now, all create a new story is going to do is give you a blank starting point. Worth bearing in mind is there are some limitations to creating your stories. You can only have a minimum of five different sort of pages to your story and I believe a maximum of 30. You're only allowed one link per page and you're only allowed one affiliate link for the entire story. So bear that in mind if you're considering using this for marketing purposes, you have some limitations on what you can and can't do. Let's take a look at the templates first of all, because this should give you a good idea of the types of things you can create. And I'm going to use this as a starting point, because like I say, creating something as a new story, it's just the same as this, just with one single blank template. You can see we've got some nice examples. If we want to view any of these, we can do just that. And you can see we can view any of the pages or slides or whatever you want to kind of call these just by clicking on it. We can see the color scheme that's being used. They've just sort of put things through for keywords that they think relate to this particular template. We can jump over to previous templates, take a look at other ones. And you can see we have related templates that are going to fit into any of these kind of things to do with the grouping them together. So what we can do is we can come back out of this and we can say, well, let's use this as an example. So we'll say use the template. Now, there's one thing I will definitely give Google credit for here. They've created a really nice desktop type interface for working with. All I can say is if WordPress could develop something along these lines to do various different aspects, especially for like the Gutenberg editor. I think a lot more people would like it because this is truly a nice, simple, clean drag and drop environment to work with. Let's take a quick look at what we have and then we'll see how we can edit one of these individual pages. 
On the left-hand side, we've got our assets and we can see we can use everything, like we've got images, you can have videos and so on, so you can filter those out. You can upload directly to this. You can search, pretty self-explanatory. We then have text objects, so we can insert text. You can see I can click and insert text item. And I've got shapes. So if I click on text, we've got a couple of predefined presets, headings, subheadings, and body text, for example. And then we can add a new text if we want to. We can also come over and choose some basic shapes. So if you wanted to put a shape behind this, do as get more done, we could drag that over, drop it onto our page, resize this, position it where we want. And then on the right hand side, we can do a couple more things. We can change the opacity. So let's set that to something like 30%. You can see now we can see through it, but obviously it's in the wrong place. If we look at the bottom, we've got layers much the same as Photoshop or Affinity Designer, and we can interact with those in the same way. We can drag this down and put it underneath the text, and then the text shines through, and we can now just adjust that to make sure everything sits the way that we want it to. We've got a nice simple alignment options at the top, and you can multi-select items. So you could just grab all of this, select everything, and you could hit align center, for example, and then everything lines up nice and neat in the center. You have other alignment and spacing options, but like I say, it does work in a very familiar fashion if you're used to working with anything like Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Designer, and so on. All those kinds of basic options are there. So I really like the way that that works. If we want to preview this, we can hit preview. That will open up a new tab, and you can see now we can take a look at this in context to our entire story. So that's pretty cool. I like that option. Okay, so we've got some other things down the bottom. So you can delete a page, you can duplicate a page, you can add a page, you can undo and redo. So some basic options inside there. You can add a title at the top, so we could just call it Introduction, for example. There we go. And if we want to click through to the next slide or the next page, we can do that, or we can choose the options down the bottom. So it's really super simple on how to use it, and we can just close this down if we want to. We can select anything on here. We can choose from the save colors. We've got size and position, so we can choose those. We can rotate things. You can resize things. It's all really simple and intuitive, and it's nice to see you've got things like alignment lines. Again, if you're used to working with Illustrator, Photoshop, those kinds of applications, it does make lining things up so much easier in a visual fashion. And again, this is where I say it would be nice to see some of the page builder tools we have out there, page layout tools, to integrate some of these options into them so we could get more creative using kind of facilities that we've become accustomed to with desktop related applications. Okay, so you can change things like any of the fonts. You've got all the Google fonts available inside there, rotation, all those kinds of useful things. A nice, clean, simple interface. We can adjust alignment on there. We can do all those kinds of things, set things to bold. You know, we can change colors. We can do all different kinds of things. Everything is nice and easy to work with. So I really like the interface itself. That's all pretty cool. Now, on top of the design-related aspects, we also have the document options. We open that up, you've got what you'd expect to see from a typical post page and so on inside WordPress itself. We can make things draft, public, or private. We have some publishing options, so again, the same as what you'd expect to see. We've got publisher logo and we've got cover image. Now, these are something that you really want to add in there, and as you can see, they are required. Now, I've set up, for example, the publisher logo. I'm using just a little logo uploaded. But if I want to change this cover image, I can simply select upload my image or images or choose on the media library, so I'll just choose this as an option. And there we go. We then have the permalink. Now, by default, this is just going to be given a string of numbers. But once you drop in there, you know, the title either inside the permalink or at the top of the editor area, that will then replace this with the full URL. And you can see, hopefully, it says it's your domain forward slash stories forward slash the name of the particular story that you're working with. So all of your stories are going to reside in this stories custom post type, this section. So worth bearing that in mind. We've also then got some simple basic options for how you interact with this. You can have it set to auto and you can set the duration. So in other words, each slide, each page, whatever you want to call them, will last for seven seconds before progressing on to the next one. If you don't want to use that, you want to make someone have to interact manually. Say, for example, you're creating a beginner's guide to something or some instructional information that has more text that you may want people to read, setting this to manual. 
gives them control over when they actually proceed to the next page or previous page. So you can see we can choose whichever option suits to what you're kind of setting up. Other than that, there's nothing much else in there you need to worry about. So let's just say we want to make this public and we're going to say we want to update it. So now we've got that set up and there's our link inside there. Now this is where the issue that I've got comes in when I'm testing this. If I try to embed this in a page or post or anything else, what happens is it just tells me there's a problem with it and nothing will happen. It'll just either won't save or I just get a sort of an error message pop up. This could be just my mileage, so bear that in mind if you are going to test this out. You may come across the same issue yourself. But if you found that and you found a workaround, let me know in the comment section below because I would like to see how this would all work. However, like I say, once we've done that, we've updated everything so we could come over and take a look at your stories. So we can come back out of this, go back to our stories, into our dashboard. And from there, there's our stories. So you can see my story, introduction. If I want to, I can preview this. I can say I can delete it, I can duplicate it, rename it, open it in the editor. I can click and that'll take me through to the editor again. Okay, so that's how easy that is. So let's just say we go back to all stories. So there's our stories, there's introduction. If I say view, I'll open up a new tab and we can see there's our new entry with my dodgy little bit of text at the top, my customized section here, you know, everything is laid out nice and neat. And it does look quite nice. And like I say, better on a mobile device. Okay, so how would you normally go about embedding this into something? Well, there's two ways you can do it. When you create a new story and you save it for the first time, you're asked if you want to create a page. And all that'll do is, or post, I should say, and all that'll do is that will create a post for you and supposedly insert the relevant little block of code. But if I try that way, I still get the same problem. So I'm just going to show you how it works or it's supposed to work. So let's just go and add a new post. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this a name and we'll just say test post. And underneath, we're just going to click the plus and we're going to do a search for story. And there you can see there's the widget, the web story widget, which is the widget you're supposed to use inside Gutenberg to insert these. So we'll click. It says you need to drop in the URL for this. I've copied that URL. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to paste it inside there. And you can see this is what I was saying. There's our stories. There's the name introduction. So everything should work fine. And I've tested the link and it's perfectly fine. However, if I click embed, you can see, oh, actually it does work this time. So for some strange reason, it's decided now to work. But there we go, that's inserted that into our page. If we publish this now and we preview it, we'll have a page with that in. So what we can do is we can still add extra information in. So we could, if we wanted to add in some new information. So we'll put, uh, for example, let's put a paragraph in there. Um, we'll just put in some text, there we go. So we now have a page created. So we'll update that and we'll preview it. So we'll preview, preview in a new tab. There we go. Oh, and actually it has worked this time, but you can see there's our embedded information and well, nothing actually happens. We can't view it, nothing's going on. The images are not showing up. So there's still some kind of weird quirks with this. And I don't know if it's something to do with the theme that I'm using, even though I've tested it out with a different theme or just something to do with my particular setup. Just doesn't seem to like it for some reason, but that's how it's supposed to work. Now you may be asking yourself, why would you even want to use these kinds of web stories as part of the Google service? Well, I think, I think this is something that is definitely going to have a potential improvement with SEO rankings. So you can see that the Google search is kind of being configured for these web stories. And we've got this Google search option. This is telling us about how those stories are going to be displayed. So you could use these from a marketing point of view. You could use these from an educational point of view. People are used to story type engagement with content, like I say, through Instagram, through Facebook, through a little bit through YouTube and so on. So there is a potential to have a different type of audience that could benefit from this. You could use it for marketing purposes, as long as you're only having one affiliate link in there, or you could, I suppose, link through to an affiliate based page and use that to drive traffic through to it from a mobile device. I'm sure there are lots of different ways you could use it. And I'd recommend taking a look at this section about how to enable web stories, how to get everything set up to make sure that if you are going to use these, that they get listed in the search results. 
Okay, so that's some basic information, but what if you're using something like Elementor? Could you still use the Web Stories option, this plugin? Yes, you could. And let me just quickly show you how you could use this in one simple example, at least when it comes to working with Elementor. Let's just create a new post. It doesn't really matter if it's a post or a page in this example, it's going to work the same. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call this Elementor. We'll hit publish on there and we'll just say publish, doesn't really matter. It's one thing I really do detest about Gutenberg. Okay, so let's edit this with Elementor. Once we open up the Elementor editor, and this is Elementor Pro, by the way, we're going to grab the posts widget and we're going to drag and drop that into our page. Now, this is where I want to draw your attention to the fact that this is still just a custom post type. If we come down to the query option, inside there you can see our source is currently set to posts. We're going to open that up and we have a new entry called stories. We can click on there and you can see that now pulls in in the same way you would with posts. You have the stories option. And what we can do with this is we can style this and do whatever we want layout wise. So let's just set that to two, for example, and we'll set that to be cards Ooh, two. Okay, so we've created a basic kind of page layout. We'll update that. Now, let me just open this up to preview it. And you can see it looks as you'd expect it to. Now, if we click on one of these, you'll see that the link, if you look at the bottom of the screen right down there, you'll see the link points directly to the relevant story link. So we click to open up introduction, for example, and we get it in the story format. So we can now go through in the way that we would want. And that's quite cool. So there's one thing you could do. You could set up conditions on there to hide this on desktop and, you know, only display it on tablets and mobiles. So then people would get a slightly different experience. They would get that more sort of mobile related stories experience by using this method of displaying the information. That's just one way in which you could potentially link it through to a page builder like Elementor. Now, I know this apparently also works with Divi where you can do the same type of thing. I haven't tried it out, but it may be worth trying out if you are a Divi user. So that's another way in which you could integrate the web stories into your design work if you use Elementor Pro. That's my first look at Google Web Stories plugin for WordPress. What are your thoughts after seeing this video? Have you tried this out or would you consider taking it for a spin after seeing the video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Now, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, feel free to hit that thumbs down button twice. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.